Hey Twin Cities, it's your girl Hita back for another adventure on Hita Talk and this time I am here at Tasty Lighting Supply interviewing creative director of Coban Productions, Alex Konstam. He's inside playing around with some equipment and he's going to tell us a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes and more of his story. So come on in and let's see what he has to say. thought it would be fun since we're here at the awesome warehouse of T Tasty Lighting Supply. Yep. Um, I don't personally know a whole lot of like huge big shot productions, but you know, the things that I do know, the things you've taught me. Sure. What are some essential pieces of equipment? We have tons of lights. Lights are, like, are super important. Okay, so lights are, lights, camera action. Right. It's like more like lights, sound, camera. Big three. They need to change that phrase then. They should. <laughs> so, what? Talk about one of these. What? What like is got, this? I don't know. This is, uh, this is a 2K Fresno. A 2K, huh? So it's measured in wattage. So like, uh, you can open the barn doors there. The barn doors? Is a cow sound gonna come out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, not funny. Okay. So there's a. There's a difference between like uh, the Fresnels and those par, par as you can see up there. Par. It's just it's just how the lights are assembled, like where the lighting is inside of them. Eco-friendly. Yeah. Saving the world. Yeah. One watt at a time. Right. Cool. Want to show us the rest of Tasty, sure. tasty Lighting Supply? Uh, you got you got like your apple boxes and your pancakes and sandbags right here. You can see the trucks, the sea stands over there. Um, that looks like a, it's a big light. I don't know, that's like a 6K maybe. More so, lights, trucks, trucks, director's chair. Director's chairs! Here like flags, um, flag silks, stuff to diffuse light, bounce light, all that stuff. So with your lights, you obviously can't just have a harsh direct light on you. You need to like use a diffuser or something. Right, exactly. It um, just look glamorous. That's what these are for. Uh, they got a lot of scenic stuff back there, like to build sets, build like backgrounds and stuff to put on. I think they shot like a soap opera here like a couple weeks ago. Oh, um, dramatic. So you have done some work here a couple of times. Yeah. How, is it pretty easy to get access to this place? Yeah, you just you talk to Mike or Regina. Uh, well, actually, you probably call her Regina. She's over at Acme Stage. It's like they share the space okay. from the same people. Okay. Um, you give her an email at like Acme Stage at I think it's like iCloud.com. Okay. Or uh, just go to AcmeStage.com, and you just be like, Hey, I want to shoot. There and they have great lighting package that you can accompany the stage. You can like you can book a half stage or even like a half day half stage right uh, to accompany uh, to yeah. your budgetary needs. I went on the website and it was kind of like a kid in the candy shop because you could see the different stages, yeah. the settings, and all of that that they obviously have on the website. But kind of it's like, ooh, how can I play with this now? Right. Cool. Well, thanks for the tour. Sure. All right. Well, welcome back for episode six of Hita Talk. It is your girl, Hita. And with me today is the fabulous, very creative, creative director of Cobam Productions, Alex Kornstam. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, thanks for chatting with us today. No problem. So sure. let's dive in and talk about your background, and then we'll go into the evolution of Cobam Productions. Evolution of Cobam. Uh, so, not many people know that I started out wanting to be a chemical engineer. Uh, I went to Purdue University for a year, uh, and then I got really bored by that. It wasn't very creative, as you can imagine. Uh, so I transferred to Lawrence University, uh, met my now very good friend Tom Coben, who uh, was in like a student film festival, like my first, my first like trimester I was there. Yeah. Had like a film where like these kids at like a shootout 
but he well, was like with fingers, and okay. he like and he like uh, <laughs> and he he added in the muzzle flashes. I thought it was great. I was like, I want to make film, and then that's how that's also how Kabam came to be because it's his last name and my last name mashed together. And then Bam, Kabam. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you grew up around here. You're from this. Yeah, I'm from St. Paul, over yonder by uh, the St. Louis University. Yeah. Don't listen to me, I'm crazy. Um, I just moved to St. Paul, so we're neighbors. Well, you're my neighbors with my mother. With your mom. <laughs> my mom. Um, cool. So, when did you start Coban Productions? How did that whole thing come about? So, I started actually in college. Um, I uh, did a lot of work for their admissions department. Uh, and so, I basically used the money that I was getting from doing admissions work to like fund movies with my friend Tom. Wow, so you guys focused on like independent movies? Yeah, we weren't like making blockbuster movies. Not at that time. Not yet. <laughs> uh, but just you guys had an idea and you went with it and then you started out in, in the film. And yes. Then, since then, um, I guess we can kind of go into what does Cobam offer, what services, what kind of clients, projects have you had before? Sure. Uh, I mean, we, we do everything from music videos to commercials to narrative filmmaking, features, shorts, um, uh, you know, we just, like, uh, we, actually in here, like last weekend we shot some uh, great industrial videos for a nuclear engineering company. Oh wow, um, so like promotional materials. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, promotional materials, um, events, fashion, like, we just, we pretty much, if you want it captured for the end of days, well, we could do it. Got it covered. Got it covered. Yeah. We've actually worked together we significantly have. a lot in 2015. Apparently, all, all the work we've done together is in like your intro for this segment. You guys captured that at the beginning of the Heat Attack trailer. I'm driving a Bentley and I'm standing in the Bentley Maserati dealership. No big deal. Yours um, truly. But that was produced, directed, and edited, and all that fun stuff by yours truly, uh, Coleman Productions. Okay. Um, and then, of course, Work, that was for Rumble in one way. Yep. And, and then you've done a lot of things for fashion designers around town, too. Yeah, uh, we, you know, I, the nice thing is that um, a lot of local, like, the prime example is uh, over in St. In St. Paul, there's a, a, like a lingerie boutique called Flirt Boutique. Yep. There's always people out there that will want their work displayed, you know, what their company offers. Yeah. And, Jessica, who runs Flirt, has always been like a really great friend, oh. and is always like, I'm like, hey, I want to do a shoot. Any thoughts? She's like, oh, we just got this in, we got that in. Yeah. Um, we did some stuff for like Parker, Parks and Parker, uh, like Pretty Rock Girl, uh, you know, Hunt Anna, stuff. you know, all the, you know, everyone has Samantha Ray. You know, if you go to any, you can go to any, mostly any store, yep. and be like, I'd like to do, i like to shoot some of this stuff. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, we'd love to help you do that, because so unsurprisingly, a lot of people want to just help local artists. Yeah. You just have to have, like, the confidence to go in there. And you do. Now, you don't work alone. I know, no. well, so you do a lot of local stuff, but I know you travel, too. Yes. Which is really cool. Um, I do... I, I'm sure anyone that's seen any of my work or uh, been on any of my tenure with on any of my projects, um, Alex Schwant shoots just about everything. I, literally everything that I that I produce. Yeah. Uh, it's been fun to transition to more of like a producing role. Uh, producing and writing is like my it's like my sweet spot. How many other people do you think you have coming in and out of your team? I know the last <laughs> behind the scenes there was a good handful. Yeah, um, I'd say we have like a solid, like it'd be like him and we like our AC guy Arnie and then our, you know, we have nicknames for our crew. We have uh, our second AC is like named like Quattro. Quattro. David James Peter John. He has like four <laughs> names. Oh, wow. Um, we always have like well, basically usually the same lighting guy and the same lighting team. So it's yeah. usually around like the same rotating like eight people. Uh, I learned a lot just yeah. working with you. There's a lot of people. There's Mike. There's lights. Um, yeah. I almost got knocked in the head with a boom mic, which was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that should have been a boom. Uh, but tons of stuff, and I think that's really cool. It shows how much you've evolved in such a short amount of time. Yeah. 
What would you say has been what would you say has been some of the challenges or obstacles, whether it's sure. managing a team in the industry as a whole or being a small business entrepreneur? Sure, I think the hardest thing to get down when you're starting uh, a business is really communication. I think you have all the ideas in your head, uh, but being able to convey them to your team can be hard sometimes. I think uh, a challenge that can present itself is really um, everyone being on the same page. Yeah, I think but in, in terms of um, in terms of like finding work. Uh, starting out can be tricky, um, but I think, um, you know, making good partnerships with people, networking, meeting people. Like the first thing I did when I graduated, uh, my dad was like, you have to go to the Twin Cities Film Festival. You've, you emailed Jaden, or you've, you've interviewed Jaden. Um, fantastic place to meet like-minded film people. Sure. That's how I met, a lo I got a lot of work that year, both on and behind the scenes. Um, because of because of just going to network? Exactly. It's a huge outlet. I mean, I, I collaborate a lot with the Film Fest, obviously I work with them, but um, just other festivals too and, and networking opportunities for people like you and yeah. actors and behind the scenes crew to do immaculate work. Cool, so that yeah. was successful. Yeah. What's like one or two pieces of advice that you have for for aspiring filmmakers or entrepreneurs or anybody really sure. in the film and entertainment industry? Um, I would say um, putting, like I said before, I think really putting yourself out there is nine times out of ten is like the most, super the most important thing. Confidence in, in your abilities and that you always have room to be better. Yep very important realization to have um, in terms of like starting out yeah. and um, even even if you've done it for when you're working in any field specifically film I think knowing that you still always have room to grow yeah. that um, it's like it's very important to like it, I, I, I'm, I find myself very lucky because I I've worked with the same crew for like three years. Like since I started, wow. I've had like the same crew, and we all love each other. And we, <laughs> and like the wow. o, the OGs of my crew have like a, uh, we call ourselves like the Clutch. It's I like a it's like it's like a, it's like a it's like a secret it's like a secret organization within my my company. Don't give the secret. Don't tell though. anybody. It's a secret. <laughs> uh, but it's it's important to. Uh, find people that you love to work with that are good at what they do yeah. and that you can trust. I think putting yourself out there is such an easier phrase yes. to say than to do. Um, even us extroverts sometimes get shy. I mean, yeah. I'll go to an event by myself, but sometimes I don't want to or sometimes I don't know where to start. It's almost too overwhelming. And sometimes I'll have the, you know, big boost of confidence. And then uh, people that kind of keep quiet and kind of do things a little yeah. bit more behind the scenes might struggle with that. So if networking physically is a little bit intimidating or daunting, do you have any other insight maybe through yeah. online outlets? Sure, I think, um, and this is a good example too. I, um, when we first met David, who's who kind of has been like our, he was started out basically as like our camera trainee. Okay. He did like a feature with Alec uh, but he went on he went on Facebook and he found the, the, there are like various there there are various like f uh, forums and stuff uh, you could like list them below I don't know there's right. like you know like TC Cinematic and Minnesota Film Production TV Production sure all that stuff and he like made a post that was like hey I need an internship to graduate uh, anybody have any tips or leads uh, and like there was one guy that was like. That's not how you go get opportunities. And then, like, the outpouring of people that were like, "No, you're wrong. This is exactly how. This is exactly how we network now. Um, use There's social no media. Talk. There. Exactly. There's no wrong way to. Well, there is like a, there are wrong ways, but like well, what technicalities. <laughs> Semantics. Yeah. Um, but no, there. Are, but like, 
going out there and messaging people, shouting at people, uh, friending people can be weird sometimes, but it's like, hey, I saw you did so-and-so. I'd love to help. Uh, I want, I need experience. I want to get out on those sets. Yeah. Um, like, just go for it. Totally. And I think that social media has, like, that, like, that, you don't have, you have, like, that barrier where, like, you can be, like, on a keyboard and you can send a message to someone that's like, hey, you're really great. Let's do something together. It is. It's kind of like giving a speech. A lot of people hide behind the podium and some people like me are like, give me the stage. Right. But it's it's a lot barrier. I think we met through Haley Anderson. We did. But she may have introduced us initially on Twitter. And I think that's like, that sounds about I right. think she tagged you and said something that you'll be there as, your, as the photographer. Yes. Um, but Twitter is a really great outlet. I Instagram, love And then so many things on Facebook, like you were saying. Yeah. Cool. If you could go back and do one or two things differently in your career path sure. what would you tell young Alex young Alex um, to uh, invest in yourself early um, I like it was it was you know I was very much on the fence about uh, how much I would invest in my company <laughs> we grew up with but well, we grew up with generation extras that was like your job is to go to college and then uh, get a full-time job and su- like save money and have kids and the traditional way. Right, and so yeah. it's weird when um, you know I graduated college and like you know I, I taught over at IFP and I worked at TPT. At that time, I was starting to get inquiries um, about like, hey, do you want to do you want to like film this and shoot that? Uh, produce this, do that, uh, and finally I was like, you know what, maybe I could do this, I can, I could do this by myself. Sure. So it's weird to realize, like, you know, maybe you won't be the happiest in a full-time job, maybe you'll be happiest doing your own projects, um, and having the confidence to say, like, I will, I will put all of myself into that right away. So when you say invest in yourself, you're not necessarily saying always just on a financial standpoint. Right. It's more so the opportunities, some free work, some paid work. Yeah. It's being open-minded to the opportunities that life pro- provide you. And like, yes, that means sometimes starting out doing some spec work, sure. but sometimes like uh, that turns into like award-winning stuff. Yeah. Well, we can chat for a long time, but yes, tell us how we can find out more about you, your services, and all that jazz. Sure. Uh, you can go to www.kabam.com to see the website. Uh, We're going to put that right here. And Facebook, we have yeah. you know, the page. Yeah. Well, all uh, your contact information is probably on the website. Yeah. Um, samples of your work. And samples of my work are on there. can get you to... Can hire, can hire my services, my <laughs> team services. Maybe a little joint venture. Yeah, you're like we offer services with PR, so. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I, know good, I know a good girl. I know, I know a pretty small girl. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's how you get in touch with me if you want something done right. Do it right. Do it the Coban way. Well, thank you for chatting with us on Heat Attack today, uh, but we're not done. It's time for Heated Talk Trivia. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because you're a pro in this industry. And you can totally fake it. I can totally fake it. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of them, I kind of want to stump you. I know you're genius. It's probably much easier than you think it is. You went to Purdue. You tried to do the engineering thing. I tried to do the engineering thing. Loved it, but, you know, I'm going to try to stump you. Um, It's going to not take that much. So we're going to ask you some questions and then (laughs) fill in the blanks. (laughs) Alex. Yeah. What does S A G in SAG stand for? Screen Actors Guild. Whoop, whoop. That is correct. <laughs> okay. In the film market, by box office, yep. what three countries have the largest markets? Uh, China. Okay. Uh, London and America. Oh my gosh, that's two out of three. That's actually, I had no idea you would get a lot of them, not undermining you. It's the USA, yeah. China, and Japan. Japan. 
Oh boy. They got tons of connections over there, apparently. All right, let's let's quiz your uh, your expertise on the director world. I'm gonna give you two movies. You tell me who the directors were. Who directed Saving Private Ryan? Steven Spielberg. That is correct. And who directed Goodfellas? Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese. Okay, and the final question. What movie is this quote from? I'll give you a bonus to make up for the other question. Um, If you can guess the actor. All right. Actor and movie. The quote is, I'll be back. Terminator. The first one. And who was the actor? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> All right. That's almost a perfect score because he got the bonus. Right on. Ooh. Well, there you have it, folks. Alex Cohen-Stam from Colvan Productions. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And that is it for episode six of Heat to Talk, episode um, six of season one. I'm getting a little tongue-tied here. So stay tuned for season two coming up here in early spring. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media. And until then, we'll see ya.